Ready? As I'll ever be. Let's do it! Our favorite Power Rangers series, Mighty Morphin, started on weekdays but moved to Saturday mornings to the great delight of school-age children. With a strangely addicting theme song, the Power Rangers have remained a part of childhood to the present day. However, not all is known about this action-packed series and its untold, unseen, and shocking secrets. Join us as we unveil the 20 shocking secrets of the Power Rangers' Mighty Morphin. Unexpected ban in Malaysia. Power Rangers' Mighty Morphin was not accepted into Malaysia, and the reason is very simple. After the show Mighty Morphin Power Rangers came to life, it was well received in North America and distributed to other countries. Though the current series seems tame enough for American children, other countries have their own sets of laws and regulations guiding TV shows. Since Super Sentai, from which Mighty Morphin Power Rangers was adapted, was already being localized for some Asian countries, some changes had to be made to the Power Rangers so they didn't look exactly like their Japanese counterparts. However, the show wasn't only sometimes accepted. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers was briefly banned in Malaysia, and the reason was fairly simple, the title. The word Morphin, which is a slang variation of the word morphing, which refers to transformation or change, was feared to refer to morphine, a medication instead. Malaysian officials believed that morphine was promoting substance use. The show was eventually allowed to air after the potentially dangerous word was removed from the show's title. However, the producers were determined not to let this setback dim their shine, so they agreed to compromise in a move that portrayed adaptability. The title would be changed with the morphine removed to dispel any unintended associations with the drug. This evolution finally allowed the show to make its mark in Malaysia, causing joy and excitement for countless fans. Tragic Loss of the Yellow Ranger Trini Kwan, the original Yellow Ranger, portrayed by Tui Trang in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, holds a special place in the show. Her relationship with the company, Sabin Entertainment, could have been smoother, but she had a strong bond with her other four cast members. They often spent long hours together filming the show, and the cast often recalls the family-like atmosphere. The original three Rangers, of which Tri Trong was a part, were left in a contract dispute, and they all hoped to reunite one day. Many of the cast did reunite in Power Rangers Super Mega Force's legendary battle at episode, where past and present Rangers banded together to fight evil. However, quite unfortunately, Tui Trong did not make it to that reunion, nor did she make it to the Huffington Post Power Rangers reunion interview in 2014. A tragedy occurred to her when she was killed in a car crash near San Francisco in 2001. In a touching tribute, the Power Rangers Time Force episode Circuit Unsure was dedicated to her memory. This gesture exceeded the screen's bounds as it united the Power Rangers community in mourning and remembrance. Rita Repulsa's Dark Japanese Backstory Rita Repulsa is the iconic villain of the show and is known for her striking antagonism and comedic wrath, but her villainy is more than you think. The character's origins can be traced back to a Japanese series where she was known as Witch Bandora in Kyoryu Sentai Zuranger, from which Mighty Morphin Power Rangers was inspired. The show's introduction shows us that she was imprisoned for years and has returned to conquer Earth. Her Power Rangers backstory is more devious in the original Japanese series. She originally lived in the prehistoric days as Queen of the Doll Tribe. After her son was killed by a Tyrannosaurus avenging its young, she went crazy with grief. She sold her soul to Great Satan in exchange for magical powers while losing all memories of her son. In her rampage, she was taken down by the other tribal leaders and sealed away for 170 million years. She was accidentally set free in 1992 by unsuspecting astronauts. The American adaptation served to soften the darker shades in this villain, to align with the show's tone and target audience, and the result is a villain who, although still menacing, often veers into the realm of the comic with her schemes and amusing tantrums. The original pilot is different from what you think. Before the show became a cultural monument, it underwent a significant transformation from the original version. The Air Pilot, 
a rough blueprint of the show's potential, showcased several key differences that emphasized the creative evolution of the series. One of the most notable changes was in the cast of the Yellow Ranger. The cast of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers had to go through an audition process. In the pilot, a different Yellow Ranger appeared. Audrey Dubois was initially cast as Trini. She was a powerful Latin martial artist. Audrey Dubois would only appear in the pilot episode, Day of the Dumpster. Walter Emmanuel Jones, who portrayed Zack Taylor, stated in an interview that Audrey Dubois was let go after asking for more money. Trini was recast as Tui Trung, who had studied Kung Fu since she was a child. She was one of the few cast members who had martial arts training. Two new pilot episodes starring Tui Trung as the Yellow Ranger instead were filmed. All future episodes were planned around her new actress and not the original pitch for Trini. Another significant transformation was in the character of Billy, the Blue Ranger. In the pilot, the character's name was Billy Cranston, which was more like paying homage to the late musician Brian Cranston, who later gained fame and even went in to contribute voices to the series. Overwhelming fame and its downsides. As the show experienced a sudden upward surge, it not only turned the characters into household names, but also catapulted them into unprecedented fame, a feat that was as exhilarating as it was overwhelming. And you know what? Fame does crazy things to both actors and fans. After the surprising success of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the actors, who were relatively unknown before the show, became popular and started living well. They enjoyed meeting fans and celebrities who visited the set with their kids. However, fame also came with its downsides, particularly for Austin St. John, who portrayed Jason Lee Scott. The Red Ranger displayed confidence and strength to fans. Kids wanted to be him, and older fans wanted to claim him. Austin St. John's athletic skills impressed young female fans. The fans became so obsessed with him that they would often rip off his clothes in their attempts to touch him in public. He also had to move and change houses not once but twice because fans would often stalk his house. After multiple attacks, Austin St. John had enough. He began to shield himself and become more private. Unbelievably tight filming schedule. The show's overwhelming success meant that the episodes were in constant demand, which translated into an overwhelming schedule for the cast. The filming schedule for Mighty Morphin Power Rangers was extremely tight. At the onset, it was still unknown if the show would be successful, and Saban was taking a potential hit in profit by moving forward with the show. The cast would try to stay nearby if they had to work the next day. The tight schedule meant king days in the set, and sometimes even extending to weekends, leaving very little room for rest or personal time. As a result, Tui Trung, who portrayed the Yellow Ranger, Trini Kwan, and Amy Jo Johnson, would often sleep over at each other's homes to be closer to the set and be there at the earliest possible time. One perfect example of the tight demand came in 1994, after a devastating earthquake rocked Los Angeles. They went through the quake together and were shocked when they had to report to work only a few hours later, Though they showed up and were ready to film, they didn't shoot an episode that day because the rest of the crew stayed home. Jason David Frank's Martial Arts Influence Our beloved Jason David Frank, who portrayed Tommy Oliver in The Green Ranger, didn't initially have a starring role. He was simply meant to act as a temporary villain, working for the leading antagonist, Rita Repulsa. His last episode was initially supposed to be The Green Candle Part Two which would have had dire consequences for poor Tommy. After hearing that the character might not return, fans of the show flooded Sabin's offices with pleas to keep the character around. These pleas were before the days of social media and the internet, so fans had to get traditional, and having to write out letters, address them, and take them to the post office had more impact. Thanks to fan demand, Tommy was given another chance and became a regular Mighty Morphin Power Rangers cast member. Jason David Frank enjoyed the role so much that he stayed around for guest appearances in future seasons.
His background in martial arts confirmed his portrayal of the character Tommy and significantly influenced the show's fight choreography by introducing a certain level of authenticity and complexity that became a hallmark of his character's fight scenes. His expertise in the field allowed for more intricate fights as he could perform a wide range of stunts and techniques by himself. As a result of his proficiency, the producers and choreographers were led to design action sequences that would fully utilize his skills. His involvement meant that fight scenes weren't just meant to showcase the might, but to highlight the importance of martial arts discipline. Amy Jo Johnson's Fear of Heights Before Mighty Morphin Power Rangers debuted on television in 1993, no one knew how popular the show would become or if it would succeed. As a result of Power Rangers' great success, the franchise has continued for decades. There have been movies with talks of more to come. Power Rangers have come a long way, and while it is amazing to see how far the franchise has come, many fans still have a special connection to the show's original stars. For that reason, many people still want to know what happened to the Power Rangers actors in the 90s. Two actors immediately come to mind when people think about the Power Rangers stars from the 90s. Although Jason David Frank appeared in the 17th episode, he is one of them, and the other is Amy Jo Johnson. During the first three seasons of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, Amy Jo Johnson portrayed Kimberly Hart in 137 episodes. She also notably starred in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, the movie, and had a supporting role in the sequel, Turbo, a Power Rangers movie. During all those episodes and movies, Johnson did such a great job playing the original Pink Ranger that many fans were deeply invested in her character. On top of that, fans also came to care about Kimberly's romance with Tommy, the character Jason David Frank brought to life. However, fans didn't know that behind the scenes, she faced a personal challenge that starkly contrasted her fearless persona, a great fear of heights. This fear was an obstacle and had tangible implications for the show, especially when she had to be in scenes requiring aerial stunts or elevated positions. Aware of this phobia, the production team navigated this challenge with sensitivity and creativity. And for scenes that involved height, which was every action scene, adjustments had to be made for her to be accommodated. Cameras were innovatively placed and careful editing gave the illusion that she performed stunts from dizzying heights. Rangers partying like it's 1999. Maybe we know these actors on set, but what about their personalities outside, which the camera doesn't show us? Walter Emanuel Jones is well known for portraying Zack Taylor, the Black Ranger. Another well-known figure is his co-star Austin St. John, who played the main hero, Jason Lee Scott, and did his job perfectly. As mentioned earlier, these were more or less a couple of nobodies until the mighty Morphin Power Rangers blew sky high and shot them to unexpected fame. After gaining fame from the show, both men lived together in Glendale, California. But what made them more public other than the show was partying. Their parties ended up being the talk of the whole town. They were like wild frat parties, with the only difference being the presence of stunt team members and professional backup dancers. There were multiple kegs in the backyard where tipsy partygoers would attempt to play volleyball. With such a large crowd, the police were often called to their house. They could be told to keep it down, but would continue the party shortly afterward. It reached a point where if a party got too rowdy, a police helicopter would show up and shine its spotlight on the crowd as a warning. Almost a decade without sale, the show may have witnessed huge success, but did you know it went a long time without sales? The road to success for the show was paved with difficulties. When Heim Sabin first discovered Super Sentai Heroes, he was impressed. At the time, his only experience producing a TV show was Kid Video on NBC. Though he had little experience, he told his partner, Shuki Levy, that he wanted to bring Super Sentai to American children. Though America has a history of superheroes clad in spandex, it still proved difficult to sell the premise of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers to networks. He thought that TV stations would be thrilled to take on the show, but the reality was harsh, most refused. For seven years, he tried to convince them that kids would love a show about teen martial artists fighting alien threats. 
Every network he approached turned him down until he met Margaret Loesch, president of Fox Children's Network. Surprisingly, she loved the idea and even more surprisingly, gave him the green light. Children are learning violence and practicing it. As mighty Morphin Power Rangers rose in popularity over the years, a sea of controversies threatened its foundations. Parents, who were unaware, had finally begun to watch the show for the first time. Though the show didn't have any human deaths or graphic stuff, they complained about the amount of violence. Parents and advocates complained that the show's portrayal of combat, though eye-catching, could encourage aggression in children. Other countries took notice of the violence too, and in 1994, a young woman in Norway was killed while reportedly recreating the action in the show along with friends. Though the show was said to be unrelated to the violent crime, it was pulled from TV3 to protect young viewers. Similarly, in New Zealand, many parents complained that the show was a poor influence and inappropriate for kids. Parents believed the show told kids that fighting was the only way to resolve conflicts. The show was pulled from Television New Zealand, even though the country became the home of multiple Power Ranger series that were filmed. Over 15 years later, it wasn't until 2011 that the show was finally allowed back on the air. What you didn't know about Zordon. Remember the giant head floating in a tube named Zordon? David Fielding was thrilled when he was cast, taking inspiration from powerful gods like Zeus or Odin. Unfortunately, the role wasn't reoccurring. The series was already tight with a limited budget, and the intensive CG footage that Zordon required was just pushing the limit. All of Zordon's scenes had to be filmed over a few hours in one day. He had to be shaved bald and sit in a single chair for hours. His face was filmed from different angles and reused throughout the season. This character was even more creepy because his facial footage was shot separately from his voice. Though you may not have noticed, as a young child, his mouth movements and speech were not in sync. Stop using weapons. Parents in the early 1900s were becoming more and more concerned with violence in children's media. All available media was becoming increasingly violent and crawling into content for adults and children. Mortal Kombat, the extra violent video game, was released in 1993 making politicians and guardians more concerned with the media children consume. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers have already faced censorship or an outright ban in some countries. In season one of the show, the Power Rangers often used their blade blasters to take down enemies. These blasters didn't shoot bullets per se, but it didn't stop parents from being concerned at how much they replicated actual guns. Parents complained to Sabin about these replica guns and the weapons were not used in battle again in season two. The blade blasters remained permanently holstered. They had to leave. People tend to head for greener pastures when the pay is low and there are other opportunities. The pay was low, the working conditions were unfair and no end was in sight. Austin St. John, Tui Trung and Walter Emanuel Jones left in season two. The worst part was that they knew that Saban Entertainment was making millions from the show, along with toy sales, but the company needed to pass along the wealth to the cast who did the most work. The low wages frustrated the entire cast, but not all of them were willing to quit. In a later interview, Amy Jo Johnson also revealed that the three cast members wanted to become part of a union. Joining a union would guarantee them more rights and fair compensation for their work. Saban Entertainment didn't think so and refused to change. The shocking thing you didn't know was that Saban had to use body doubles and stock footage to hide their departure for six whole episodes until their replacements, Steve Cardenas, Karen Ashley, and Johnny Young Bosch were hired. Great improvisation of characters. It is undeniable that Japan's Super Sentai inspired Saban Entertainment shows but the company didn't know how to replicate everything, or maybe they just didn't want to. They knew they couldn't use stock footage for every one of their scenes, and the actors they hired would have to perform sometimes. Often the cast had to make up their fight choreography. The crew would give the cast instructions on what to do. Luckily, the cast they picked was talented and dedicated to their roles. Walter Emanuel Jones, the Black Ranger, was a talented martial artist and a dancer, 
In an interview, he recalled when he was given 30 minutes to do something interesting with a bench. Within that short time, he had to make up a compelling fight scene to impress viewers and look good on camera. Altered love story, no fairy tale ending. The mighty Morphin Power Rangers were primarily focused on friendship and fighting evil. But you probably needed to learn that the producers had other things in mind. Things changed when Tommy Oliver, the Green Ranger, appeared on screen. Although he was an enemy on the battlefield, he and Kimberly developed a romance. Their romance would soon end in Power Rangers Zero, where Kimberly writes a letter to Tommy, letting him know she had fallen for someone else. He was happy for her, even though it broke his heart. Tommy would also later move on to develop a relationship with another ranger. A future was initially envisioned for Kimberly and Skull, one of the notorious bullies. The script editor for Power Rangers Wild Force revealed in 2005 that he wanted to reveal that Kimberly ended up marrying Skull. Their son would have been Power Rangers Samurai Spike. The idea was later dropped. All we know is that their teenage romance may have ended, but the future holds many possibilities. Well, that storyline was scrapped. The work environment was not so friendly. At the time of the show, America was a country that was still growing to accept people of different races, genders, and orientations. When Power Rangers Mighty Morphin debuted in the 1990s, many people weren't so accepting of different people. This was noticeable in the Blue Ranger, David Yost, who was often harassed about his preferences. In an interview in 2010, he recalled how the production staff would call him anti-gay slurs and question him about his orientation. Though David Yost loved his role, he hated the apparent fact that he was not considered a real hero, all for the simple reason that he was gay. He left the show during the fourth season, Power Rangers Zeo, after becoming so depressed that he felt like ending it all. He went so far as to go through two years of conversion therapy for his sake. However, after yet another breakdown, he finally came to terms with himself on his own. The only actor in all 145 episodes. Of all the actors in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, only one appeared in all the episodes, from episodes 1 to 145. The Power Rangers series is known for constantly rotating cast members in the lead roles. With so much turnover, actor Richard Stephen Horvitz was the only character to appear in all 145 episodes of the Mighty Morphin series and the 10-episode miniseries Mighty Morphin Alien Rangers. Horvitz is well known for his voice work across various properties. He has done voice work for shows like Ben 10 and Invader Zim, but his role as Alpha 5 in this show is perhaps his best known. Alpha 5 was Zordon's clumsy but loyal assistant who acted as the physical being the Rangers could connect with. His signature catchphrase, I ye ye ye, was well known in popular culture and remains one of the best known lines of the entire series. Horvitz only provided the voice work for Alpha 5 as various actors would eventually wear the suit for the lovable robot. Still, it's hard to imagine the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers series without the distinct voice of Horvitz. Stunt injuries and onset safety. Have you ever wondered how the Power Rangers excelled at fighting enemies in their everyday and ranger forms? You should have known that many of the cast members were skilled martial artists in real life. The Red Ranger Austin St. John has practiced martial arts since age five. He mainly practices kendo, but also has a second-degree black belt in taekwondo and a first-degree black belt in judo. Yellow Ranger Tui Trang had practiced kung fu since she was a young child. The Green Ranger Jason David Frank is no stranger to martial arts. Fans are well aware of this. He is a professional mixed martial artist who studied various styles, including Muay Thai, Wing Chun, and Jeet Kune Do. Black Ranger Walter Emanuel Jones also practices martial arts and is a skilled dancer. Saban Entertainment heavily relied on their skills. Not only did the cast have to act out their lines, but they also had to perform most of their stunts. However, the flying kicks and overdramatic battles came with real-life risks, as the cast did their best to bring the show's actions to life. Despite repeated rehearsals and choreography, Accidents and injuries were unfortunate, highlighting the dangers inherent in stunt work. 
The commitment to authenticity and quality meant that the actors would often find themselves in situations that tested the limits of their physical capabilities and sometimes they ended up injured. One notable accident involved Jason David Frank, the Green Ranger named Tommy. He was a skilled martial artist and performed most of his stunts. However, the intensity of the action sequences occasionally led to mishaps. There was this one time when a miscalculated kick sent him on a brief visit to the emergency room, but he was quickly back on set, showing his dedication. Walter Jones's Hidden Disability Known for his role as Zack Taylor, the original Black Ranger, Walter Emmanuel Jones brought infectious energy and acrobatic flair to the character, transforming him into a fan favorite. However, unknown to many fans and viewers, he faced a personal challenge that he skillfully concealed on screen. He had no middle finger. This aspect of his physical appearance went unaddressed throughout the show and did not hinder his dynamic portrayal of Zack Taylor and the Black Ranger. The production team and Jones took the necessary measures to ensure that his middle finger was not visible in any way that would distract viewers. These steps often involved strategic positioning of his hands as Zack Taylor and when he was in a costume as the Black Ranger and mindful choreography, highlighting his strength rather than drawing any attention to his disability. To be frank, his ability to perform complex dance moves and martial arts sequences without drawing any attention to his disability was beyond amazing. Let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe to see more.